Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we make informed decisions about our financial future. This is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. Before we begin our video, we always like to start off our disclosures. Any symbols that you see today should not be inferred as a trader recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, option, they all have a level of risk associated with them. You can lose all of your money. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. As we said, this is our Forex Technical Analysis video update. In each of our videos, we will review the prior system's price action to come up with key support and resistance price levels. We'll look at the crude and gold charts to come up with leading sentiment. We'll come up with a low volatility watch list, an inside bar watch list, and we'll have an economic uh, calendar update to see what could affect our future and open trades. And finally, if there's time, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. Let's pull up the charts. As we start off with our dollar currency pairs, we're starting off with the dollar Canadian. And we can see, uh, you know, we were watching this and we broke lower. As we zoom in, we can kind of see, we could come in here and draw another price level just to show you that now we're breaking below yet another uh, key area. So it certainly looks like in general that we are going to go back and retest the uh, April low. Um, certainly, we are oversold. Uh, we, we are in buying zones, but right now, it makes sense that we're going to go lower. Now, why is that? Well, again, we have all the issues with the debt ceiling and all the things going on with the dollar in the States, um, that is what's uh, pushing us lower. Um, going on to the dollar franc, and we'll see a similar story. Um, the dollar is just getting crushed. And so, therefore, uh, we are we are continuing to move lower. Likewise, uh, we're obviously oversold. Here, we actually have an inside bar. Hopefully, that means uh, you know the indecision, and we can move back. But you can see the key area that we were in for well over a month, and now we broke lower, so it made a new low. Uh, but hopefully, this inside bar will push us back up towards the um, twenty moving average. We also have an inside bar on the dollar. Yen. Uh, we can see it right here. So another one that was in a key range and broke lower. So you can see the effects of this whole debt ceiling talk and the weak job numbers, what that has done to the dollar. Um, and this also in here is uh, the Wednesday um, where the Fed said that they would uh, you know, consider new policy, monetary policy. And so that also means more printing more money and weakening the dollar. Moving on to our euro currency pairs, we've got the euro franc and here again we can see the obvious downtrend we are in and uh, the push lower uh, just like with the dollar franc and then we have two inside bars here. We have one on Wednesday and one on Friday as we made a new low on Thursday so hopefully this is that indecision for a move back up to the moving average. I mean we're well off so it, it makes sense but you can also see that we're back into a neutral zone, which will, you know, again, show us that indecision that's going on there. So um, I'm, I'm going to wait and see if a new trend, you know, if we get above Thursday's wick here, you might want to consider something uh, as far as I move to the moving average. What about the euro pound? Here, uh, the, the important thing here is, is we did make a new swing high, which is great, but once, you know, we had this great move up into the swing high, we had this ascending wedge that we were watching, and now we're moving down, and where we're pausing right now, you know, the euro franc, we, we saw uh, inside bar, inside bar, here or at least we're seeing, you know, that same uh, pausing, and you can see where we're at right now, if I... You can kind of see that this is the normal bouncing place here, uh, where or a normal support place in the past. So it should be interesting to see if we do bounce here. But once again, you can kind of see that where we are on a small time frame, the one hour, we're, we're once again in a neutral zone. How about the euro yen? Another one that um, has taken a beating to the downside, uh, consolidated. We had a descending wedge that we were watching, and we did get that. 
got our inside bar, and now we're getting some sideways action. And oh, look again! Once again, we're in the <laughs> the neutral zone. So this is another one that I need to see something, possibly get above 113, and then I'll feel better about a move to the 200 moving average. But I need it to go ahead and tell me which way it wants to trend now. Remember, it's all about trading trends and not being the same and fighting upstream. Finally, we'll finish off with the U.S. dollar, and like the dollar pound. Uh, we can see that it did find its natural support even though we, we broke it a little bit and now we're getting back into this range so um, if we can get above the 20 to 50 sure we might go back up to 1.45 uh, but if you look at this we got a high a lower high a lower high you can start to say that even though longer term we're in an uptrend obviously but you can start to see the uh, the lower highs and you can also see the head and shoulders pattern. Um, so, you know, I think another break of the 200, another break of uh, 1.402 could be a confirmation of this head and shoulders pattern. All right, as we move to our pound currencies, we're starting off with the pound franc, and as all, the dollar franc, the euro franc, all of them in this downtrend that we can see. But just like the euro franc, we can see the inside bar, inside bar, so potential for our bottoming here for our move higher and same thing if we get above uh, Thursday's wick I will consider really actually you can see this uh, little support in here at 1.326 somewhere in here I will start looking at a move back to the 20 moving average which has been resistance I mean if we get back to the 20 moving average there is definitely a short potential uh, what about the pound yen uh, and just another one that's gotten beaten down. We were watching this descending wedge. If I extend it out a little bit further, just to show you some potential resistance price levels. We do have an inside bar here also. So the theme of the day is really indecision. Uh, we've got a lot of inside bars. We've got a lot of new lows and then pausing. That's really been the theme of the day and a lot of neutral on that one hour time frame. Uh, we'll finish off the pound with the dollar uh, pound dollar and we can see that it's getting back into this range it did get below the the natural support that we had in the past but it's back in this range and it's sitting at if we extend this here oops grabbed the wrong one let's try that again this one there we go and we can see there's some we're coming into some resistance here uh, in the long term uptrend. So uh, look at this, a lot of consolidate. Whichever way this one breaks, it's probably going to break pretty well because it's been consolidating for uh, two days. We'll throw in the Aussie dollar, which is also in a range. Whoops, throw that back down. Sorry about that. And we can see the range that the Aussie dollar is back in. So uh, you know. 1.08 hard resistance. Um, I was watching 1.57 as support, but you can also come down here to 1.5 basically and see support down here also. Now, our truly one really nice trending pair is the New Zealand dollar. Look at this. this there's a trend for you. <laughs> so it's making an inside bar after making a new high. Probably going to get a pullback before the next move higher. Look at this one also in the neutral zone. So the theme of the day, indecision, our hourly time frames being in the neutral zone. So we need to wait and let the trend confirm. Okay, so as we start off with the dollar, just to give you a, a quick oversight, you know, we've been watching this multi-year downtrend line that uh, you can see has been honored for a couple of years. And then the short term since May uptrend line. And what we're basically seeing is that we broke out of it finally, but we broke out of it into this range. And so the dollar is ranging, and so since there's that inverse relationship with gold and with the stock market, it's going to be interesting to see if that happens. So let's go to gold, and we'll see, nope, <laughs> gold making new highs, new highs. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so certainly you need to wait for a pullback if you're looking to get into gold, but Look at this move for uh, since the beginning of, of July. It's just beautiful. Inside bar and boom. This is exhibit A for why you should trade inside bars. We came down, made an inside bar. Wow. And finally, crude. Crude is back to its consolidating fund. 
Um, you can kind of see here, we had this range, we had the strategic release, it came down, now it's just in a new range. It, it, it just it doesn't interest me at all. As we move on to our low volatility watches, we do have a couple. Remember, since we're talking about parity indecision, so we do have some low volatility watch list candidates, uh, the dollar yen and a dollar franc, and then there are also the inside bar candidates that we talked about, the dollar franc, the dollar yen, and the pound yen. So we're marking for the low volatility, low volatility watch list. Take the one hour Bollinger Bands, mark the high and low, watch for a break. The inside bar watch, take the high and low of Friday's action, watch for a break. So as we end by our talking about our education spotlight and how winning traders are different than losing traders, what are some qualities that make them different? And one of them is understanding the playing field. Uh, winning traders understand when to trade. They understand uh, losing traders there are losing traders who have trading setups and winning traders have the same tr trading setups but the difference is that the winning trader has a discernment of knowing when to take that setup they know that the playing field has support and resistance they know that the playing field has has opening and closing time you know economic releases to avoid uh, they understand the playing field they understand the trend and they're tr taking a the setup with the trend they're not fighting they're not the same and fighting up upstream so winning traders separate themselves from losing traders by understanding the playing field and playing by the rules so, you know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have a page on Facebook, Are You Financially Literate, where we talk about personal finance and financial literacy. If you want to learn to trade Forex, we have a great video course on high probability trading stuff and how to develop your own. And then we have our coaching. Again, if you want to be transition from being a losing trader, inconsistent trader, a struggling trader to a consistent trader, we can take you, coach you one-on-one, -on -one, develop a personalized trading plan for you, and give you that psychological will to, to be focused and disciplined and to follow that trading plan that we work to get into form. Uh, if you're going to trade Forex, you might as well get paid to trade. It doesn't change the spread. doesn't change anything. It's just a rebate for your for, for, uh, Forex trades. And, of course, we have an automated trading signals for you. Um, you can let it be automated traded, or you can receive the signals and trade them yourselves. In the end, as we talked about, it's not about the system, the indicator, or the room that you're in. It's about being focused and disciplined and having the psychological capital to pull the trigger. And our coaching and mentoring sessions will help you do just that. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.